Disney's Cruella, the Novelization Chapter 6, Thirteen Years Later Squinting with her tongue poked out in concentration, Estella sat at her sewing machine. The steady sound of the machine soothed her and drowned out the other noises of the lair. The sound of horses shouting at the television, the dog's incessant yapping, Jasper's loud footsteps as he stomped around the floor below. Occasionally, she would sit up and stretch, her shoulders tight from another long night of sewing. When she did, she couldn't help smiling. Over the years, her part of the lair had come to look every bit like a fashion designer's workspace. Racks of clothes, from gaudy cop uniforms to elaborate formal attire, lined the space, creating three walls of costumes surrounding her. Pictures of models and various modes of dress were tacked on the actual walls and scattered about the floor. Sketches of outfit ideas, some complete, others in the early stages, were piled on a table. A few mannequins stood at precarious seeming angles, wearing bits and pieces of clothing. Estella turned back to the machine. Her foot pressed down on the pedal and the needle pumped up and down. She knew she didn't have much time before Horace and Jasper interrupted, and she was desperate to finish this one piece. Estella! Jasper's voice startled Estella, and her foot slipped off the pedal. Turning, she saw him standing at the far end of the lair. In the years that had passed, he had grown taller, but no wider. He was a beanpole, with a shock of brown hair that never seemed to stay in place unless stuffed under a hat. But his eyes were the same, gentle, kind, and wise. Only at the moment, there was a bit of impatience in them. We're on, Jasper said. Estella jumped to her feet and brushed past the racks of clothes, grabbing three costumes on the way. In the center of the lair, Horace was sitting on the couch watching a football match on one of their more recent acquisitions, a television. He was wearing a jersey of the team, and his face was as animated as it ever got. The jersey strained against his middle as he cheered. Spotting Estella and Jasper, he shook his head. Two minutes, please, he begged. It's stoppage time. Jasper shook his head. Now, he said. Estella suppressed a smile as Horace groaned and pushed himself to his feet. It still amused her to see the boys banter, even after all these years. They were like an old married couple. Although, she thought now, did that make her their sister? Or daughter? She shook her head. She didn't like either. No, she was their partner. In crime, at least. She threw the evening's outfits at Jasper and Horace, and they all quickly made their way out of the lair. It was time to go to work. On the way to their mark, a fancy restaurant in the theater district, Jasper and Estella got ready. Arriving in front of the restaurant, they were dressed immaculately. Estella wore a gown, Jasper a suit. They slipped inside and waited by the coat check for a few moments, just long enough to empty the pockets of a few diners before stepping back outside where Horace was pulling up in an expensive car. He jumped out, and Estella nodded satisfactorily at her handiwork. His valet costume was spot on. As they slipped into their car, Horace flipped his jacket inside out, revealing a regular dinner coat underneath. The real valet was none the wiser as Horace gave him a nod and walked down the street. Job one was a wrap. But in their line of work, there was always another job. The next day found them in the financial district. With Estella, dolled up in a tight dress and sky-high heels, sashaying through crowds of rich businessmen, as the men helped themselves to an ogling eyeful of Estella's long legs, her friends helped themselves to the men's wallets. Later, that afternoon, in a jewelry shop, Estella perused the counters, a gloved finger to her lip as she acted every inch the rich debutante. I must have something sparkling, she said over her shoulder to Jasper, her voice as posh as the dress she had sewn. And just like that, a set of diamond earrings and a matching necklace appeared, only to disappear a moment later when Buddy barreled into the store and provided a perfect distraction. And so it went, day after day and job after job. Estella's outfits got them in and their cunning got them rich, or rich enough. It never seemed like they could hold on to their earnings, so the lair remained home. Estella didn't mind. 
Her share of the profit always went to buying more fabric, more material for costumes, and her dream designs. She just wished there was something more in store for them. Maybe even more for her. Estella stared out a floor-to-ceiling window. She and the boys were in the middle of some housekeeping. Only in this case, the house was a hotel room, and the cleaning was more like a complete wiping out. Estella absently picked up objects, but her eyes never left the window. Across the street was a giant billboard advertising the latest Baroness designs. A line of gowns spread across the house-sized sign, each one bolder and brighter than the one before. What's wrong? Jasper's voice startled her. Begrudgingly, she turned her gaze from the dresses and saw Jasper standing in the doorway. Estella recognized the peculiar look on his face. It meant he was curious, or confused, about something. She shrugged and walked past him into the hall, handing him a wallet as she went. Just bored, she said. Bored? Horse had popped out of the room he had been cleaning and joined the pair. Are you kidding? I found a tiny TV. Japanese guy asleep on the bed. Look. He nodded over his shoulder. Estella peered into the room. Sure enough, there was a man sound asleep. She laughed. Leave it to horse to clean around someone. Suddenly, the stairwell door opened at the end of the hall. All three turned and watched as the hotel manager appeared. He spotted them instantly. Who are you three? he said loudly. Run! Jasper whispered out of the corner of his mouth. It was their usual getaway plan. But Estella was bored of running, just like she was bored of doing the same stints day in and day out. She wanted a change. She needed to do something to make it feel like she wasn't falling into a rut. It was time for a bit of fun. Shaking her head at Jasper, she turned and strode toward the manager. Behind her, she heard Jasper try to call her back. She ignored him. Who are we? she asked, taking on a Cockney accent. I tell you who we are. We are from a hotel consultants group, and we've been undercover. We're reporting for the head honchos of this greasy palace on the standards we have found. The manager's mouth dropped open. He stood there stammering as Estella rolled on. And one word has come to mind. She looked down her nose at the manager. Sloppy. Sloppy, Jasper echoed, joining in. A report is in the works. However, lucky for you, Frederick, Estella went on, reading the name tag on the manager's jacket. Assistant manager, we can single you out as the shining star in the sloppy darkness. Finally finding his voice, Frederick nodded. Thanks, I... For a price, of course, Estella said, cutting him off. She held out a hand. As the manager reached for his wallet, Estella gave Jasper a wink. She was bored, maybe, but that didn't mean she didn't love her job. Later that night, Estella lay on her bed, staring up at fashion shots she had taped to the ceiling. Images of the Baroness's billboard from earlier floated in front of her. It had been fun to do something different back at the hotel, but after the high had faded, she was back to feeling restless. She had been pulling heist for so long now, and with every job, she felt a bit of her childhood dream fade. What would her mum think if she could see her now, lying in the lair with nothing to claim as her own, except dozens of costumes used to rob people of their possessions? Estella grimaced. She doubted it would be anything good. Hearing footsteps, Estella turned as Jasper and Horace entered her room. A smile replaced her sad frown as she saw that they were carrying a large cake ablaze with over two dozen candles. Buddy and Wink trotted at their feet, each one wearing a party hat. Her birthday. She had completely forgotten. Beaming, she stood up. This is the nicest birthday since, she said after she blew out the candles. Since my mom was around, her eyes started to well tears, and she brushed them away. She didn't want to cry. Not that night. Jasper nodded, but instead of saying anything, he simply handed her an envelope. What's this? she asked, confused. This? 
Jasper said as a smile began to spread across his face, is an offer of employment at Liberty of London. Horace cocked his head. Clearly, he hadn't been in on the gift. Is it a hamburger place? Because that would be great. Estella couldn't believe it. It wasn't a hamburger place. It wasn't even close. Liberty of London was the most fashionable department store in the city. How did you... She trailed off, shocked. Jasper shrugged. It hadn't taken much, he told her. Just some basic sleight of hand and a bit of distraction to drop an application, filled out by him with Estella's photo attached, into the accepted tray. Well, maybe it had taken a bit of effort, Jasper added, when Estella expressed disbelief. There might have been a close call, as he dangled from a skylight over the secretary's desk, but nothing some quick maneuvering couldn't fix. A thousand emotions flooded Estella. Joy, fear, surprise, admiration. Jasper had just given her the greatest gift any person could give her. A chance to work in a department store filled with all the latest fashions, to be surrounded every day by all that fabric, all that beauty. It was a dream come true. I love liberty, she shouted, letting the excitement bubble over and out. Jasper grinned sheepishly. I know, he said. I've seen how you look at it as we pass. Now, I might have patted your CV a bit, he added, as in completely, invented a few references. If anyone asks how you know Prince Charles, just say it's a polo thing. Looking back and forth from the paper in her hand to Jasper, Estella beamed. Then she reached out and threw her arms around Jasper. Thank you, she said, hugging him hard. Horace looked confused. So what's the angle? he asked. It wasn't an odd question. They usually had an angle. Was this going to be a way to do an inside job? Scope out a new mark? But Jasper shook his head. There's no angle. Right, Horace said. But really, what is it? The angle is Estella should get a shot at being big out there because she's too talented to be doing griffs with the likes of me and you. Jasper said. His words surprised Horace into silence. Turning, he smiled at Estella. Warmth filled her, and she felt her cheeks flush. Shaking her head, she thanked him again, and then she punched him in the arm, because that's what Estella tended to fall back on when the right words saluted her, and also because they were friends, and that was what friends did. They also, it seemed, helped make dreams come true.